When I was introduced to the credit card, I charged it to the max because I like to buy clothes. Liesl shopped and overspent in all her favorite stores. I had 10 credit cards at one time, all maxed out. And I would just pay minimum payments. At 24, I owed $24,000 of consumer debt. You have one message. I'm calling from Bay Creditors. I wanted to screen phone calls because I was getting calls from collectors. I started to get depressed. I felt totally lost. When a friend at work shared his faith with Liesl, she felt hope for the first time and prayed with him. I accepted Christ as Lord of my life. And I've never been the same. And um, not long after that, I started to read my Bible. And I just knew that there was hope for me, that I wasn't going to stay in that pit forever. She made a decision to cut up her credit cards. She paid off her debts little by little until she was debt free. Later, when Liesl and Rod Leeper married, they began their life together following the financial promises found in the Bible. I saw a huge difference in our income right when we started tithing. He continually promoted me, provided me with bonuses. I can tell you we've experienced it. We've come from nothing and now God has blessed us in every area of our lives. Their income grew right along with their family. They also joined the 700 Club. We love 700 Club. I love that it is global, that millions of people have an opportunity to see and hear about the faithfulness of our God. As my dad used to say, that's the kind of ministry you want to tie your horse up to. We enjoy that, that giving. And because we enjoy it so much, God just keeps giving it back to us. We have been tithing to close to 21 years, and God has proven himself faithful time and time again. Loam was four years old and Vaughn was one when their parents abandoned them near their home in Vietnam. We were so hungry. I carried my brother to my aunt's house to ask for food, but she didn't let us in. The brothers sat next to the street, hoping that someone would see them and help them. Vaughn was crying so hard because he was starving. I couldn't do anything to help him. Another aunt found them and took them in, but over time, she wasn't able to provide for them either. There was a time when we didn't have food to eat for two days. My stomach hurt a lot. Eventually, the brothers came to live here, at this Christian home supported by CBN's Orphan's Promise. The food here is so good, and we get to eat three times a day. On our first day here, they also gave us clothes and new towel. In addition to food and shelter, the boys are also experiencing love. Today, Loam and Vaughn are healthy and active boys. They both do well in school and enjoy playing with their friends. I want to thank the people who care for us and help us. Can I see the end? In the first few weeks following Hurricane Sandy, the folks in the small coastal town of Little Egg Harbor, New Jersey, began the long process of putting their lives back together. From the start, Operation Blessing was there. 
Al Capriati, who lost both legs due to complications with diabetes, had nowhere to turn when several trees crashed down on his home. Insurance claims would take time, and with water dripping into his house, he was out of options. And it came to the back bedroom. It blew my skylight out, and it caused a leak in, in the roof over here, just below my bed. That's when I was sleeping, I started getting wet. My wife was upset, saying, what are we going to do? I ain't got this kind of money to take care of this. A friend told him that Operation Blessing was in the area, helping people recover from the storm. We gave them a call, and they were here. I said, wow. They said they can remove these trees off the roof. I said, are you sure? Because there's one tree that's it's awful big. He goes, we will take care of it. And they came in here with a crew, and they knocked that tree right out. Within hours, Operation Blessing volunteers showed up and removed the trees. Then they nailed a tarp in place to keep the rain and snow out until insurance could replace the roof. I was overwhelmed. I didn't know what to say. Thank you was not enough. And then they prayed with us. And I knew right there and then that that, 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 that was it. That was, that was him. He was, he, was in, he was in my house, making sure that everybody was safe. Because God does take care of his own. Through your donations, Operation Blessing will continue to work in Little Lake Harbor and other devastated communities, helping families in their desperate time of need. Thank you for what you did. It was, it was a blessing that you were here. I mean, really, I never thought this would ever happen to me. I believe that when you can't handle it no more, there's only one set of footprints in the sand, and that's the Lord's. Sandy Sullivan's husband is a successful businessman, but Sandy wanted a career of her own. She also wanted to be at home for her children, so she started her own business. And they offered people like me an opportunity to be a mom at home, be there for our kids and not have to go to an office every day. For five years, Sandy's business was just getting by. So she asked God to help her and started studying the biblical principles that deal with finances. I had a conversation with God and I said, partner with me, help me. Show me what you want me to do. I'm willing. The very next day, Sandy was watching the 700 Club and saw budgeting expert Angela Kaufman on the program. Sandy decided to advertise her business on Angela's website. I got really very responsive the very first month. I think I brought six people onto my team. And then the next month, I got another four, and I thought, wow, this is so great. So Sandy also decided to start tithing and become a 700 Club partner. But all of a sudden, I had people calling me. Would you consider me working with you? I'm like, sure. It was wonderful. Sandy increased her giving to CBN. It got to the point where every time I wrote a check to the 700 Club and literally put it in the mailbox, 30 seconds later, I get a phone call from somebody saying, I understand you have a business. I mean, it was laughable almost. In just one year, Sandy's income tripled. The year that I applied all these principles, especially with the tithing, the, the very next year I earned $173,000. Sandy says God asks for us to tithe because He wants to bless us. He's there for you when you call out to Him. You know, if you give, He'll give back, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. It's about the principle, not about the amount. As I move through life going forward now, I know that if there's something that He's directing, I'm excited to be a part of it because I know it's going to be something amazing. When Mrs. Fawn found an abandoned baby girl, she didn't think twice about taking her home to be her own. What she didn't know was that Tong Tong had a hole in her heart. 
It was a serious condition that only got worse as the child reached her toddler years. I cried every day for her because she threw up all of the time. I decided I would die for her if I had to, so she could live. Mrs. Fawn embraced her role as a single mother. She worked extra hours and took odd jobs to raise money for surgery for Tong Tong. Still, she never came close to having enough. And without proper medical attention, Tong Tong soon got to the point that it was a struggle for her even to breathe. She was too weak to walk, and she coughed all the time. I felt so hopeless. Every day I was afraid that it might be her last. And I could not imagine losing her, because I had to put everything I had into her. She was my life. Mrs. Fawn took Tong Tong to the doctor one last time to see if anyone could save her sick child. A doctor told Mrs. Fawn that she should contact CBN. When she did, we promised to do everything we could to keep Tong Tong alive. That included helping to pay for heart surgery. I told Tong Tong all about CBN. She was so excited that she quickly told everyone she met about how she was going to have a surgery. The surgery was a huge success. And thanks to the nutritional supplements we gave Tong Tong, in just one week, she was doing things she'd never been able to do before. Now Tong Tong can run. I remember how happy she was that first time. She screamed, look, mama, I can run. And now she won't stop running. Thank you, Sibian, for saving my daughter. You changed both of our lives forever. Eleven people live in this small two-room house in western Ukraine. Every year when the harsh winter rolls in, the family struggles to survive. Our stove makes so much smoke. It is impossible to use it to heat our home. There was so much smoke one time that everybody had to get out of the house. I went back in to open the windows and started to choke. The bad stove isn't the only problem this family faces in the cold winters. We have no shoes and no warm clothing to put on our kids. We have nothing. I can't sleep most nights because I'm so cold and worried. The children are always getting sick. Our lives are so hard every day. All I can do is to hope for a miracle. Ivanka says every night she prays God will help her family. We heard their story when we went to their village for a special winter outreach. We gave every family shoes and warm clothes, and we gave many families new stoves. We slept well last night. We didn't need layers of clothes. It was so nice and warm. And I cooked on the stove this morning. It was very fast and convenient, and you had a good hot meal. I don't even know how to express my gratitude. I wish you health and happiness. Thank you for your kindness. Our children won't get sick now. We will sleep in worms. We thank God for this. John Jackson works in a paint store, but on the weekends, he loves working as a freelance photographer. He's also a partner with CBN. They show what they're doing every day, every week, whether it's orphanages, whether it's around the world or here in my neighborhood. They show what they're doing. And to me, based on what I've learned through scripture, that's good ground. If, if that's good ground, then you'll get a harvest. In 1995, John started giving $20 a month. He says that soon after that, God prompted him to give $84 a month. But John resisted. I kind of pushed it. I'm like, I can't afford that. 
At the time, John was struggling with his finances and riding a bike to work. He had a full-time job at a local paint store, but his car needed expensive repairs, and he had to sell it at a loss just to make ends meet. One day I was riding, I was like, Lord, I'm tired of this. What's next? And again, you need to give Pledge Express, this is how much, not just give this much, but Pledge Express. He was specific on what he wanted me to do. Finally, John increased his CBN pledge to $84 a month. When I made up my mind to do it, that's when the promotion started coming. Now I just recently got promoted to store manager, uh, and that well over doubled my pay. In addition to his promotion, John saw God at work in other ways. For one thing, his photography business took off. I'm getting more hits on my website. It's, it's more than doubled, it's more than tripled. And I found a car, excellent condition, for $2,200. The blue book says it's worth $3,800. It's God. I'm just following his principles. John says that he learned those principles in part from watching the 700 Club. I hear CBN talk about all the time. They use the scripture, you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. You sow abundantly, you'll reap abundantly. And I've seen it in my own life, so now you can't convince me otherwise. John believes obedience is key to unlocking God's blessings. You can't afford not to tithe. You can't afford not to sow into a ministry like CBN. Just be obedient to God. Listen to what he's telling you. Get involved, partner with CBN. You'll be blessed. Thirty-two-year-old Patricia Guerrera is a single mother who starts her day at 4 a.m. with a boat ride into El Salvador's mangrove swamps. Some days, her 12-year-old son Carlos goes with her. In order to earn a little extra, I go with her on the weekends. Patricia and Carlos will spend eight hours without food or water searching for clams in these murky waters. Mosquitoes are everywhere along with other dangerous creatures. Then there is the mud. The mud smelled bad. It was not a pleasant place to work all day, but I had no choice. If Patricia has a good day and collects 120 clams, she'll earn just $2. That's hardly enough to feed her four children. On days they find no clams, everyone goes hungry. They asked me for food over and over again, but I told them to sleep. Some days we don't have anything, so I prayed to God for mercy. When Operation Blessing came to Patricia's hometown for a free medical clinic, we learned on that day that the family had no food and that the kids had gone to bed hungry the night before. So we immediately bought them food. A few days later, Operation Blessing helped Patricia to set up a small business, selling clothes and shoes in her neighborhood. Finally, we gave Patricia this specially equipped bicycle to make it easier to restock the items she sells in her store. I have never received a blessing like this before. After Operation Blessing did this, I never had to go to the swamp again. I want to thank Operation Blessing because they helped my mom. I am happy I don't have to go and find clams anymore. After a hard day's work on his small rice plot, Gosi heads home to see his wife and five-year-old son, Gore. My son cheers me up as soon as I see him. A partial disability from polio makes Gosi's work challenging, but he hasn't let it slow him down. When he finishes work on the farm, 
he heads off to his second job, making bricks at a factory. He earns about a dollar a day for eight hours of hard labor. Meanwhile, Gosi's wife, Sen Chang, is a skilled weaver. She made these beautiful embroidered hems for Laotian skirts until her small loom broke and she got too sick to do any other work. I was sick for months, but we could not afford medicine or doctors. We also ran out of food. Eventually, Sen Chang recovered from her illness, but the family was in debt to their relatives. So CBN bought the family a pregnant pig to start a small livestock business. Every day, Little Gore helps to feed the pig, and already the sow has given birth to two litters of 10 piglets each, which the couple has been able to sell. The moment I saw the piglets, I knew we were going to be able to make it. We were able to pay off our debts. And I was able to fix the loom and buy new thread for weaving. Now I'm making my own items to sell at the market and making more profits from that too. Our income has multiplied many times, thanks to CBN's help. We are deeply thankful to you, CBN. Hindu radicals in Orissa, India attacked Christians who refused to renounce their faith in Jesus. Some of Govinda's family members couldn't escape. My son and daughter-in-law were caught by the mobs and burnt alive. But we took the children and ran into the jungle. When we came back, we saw our parents burnt bodies. Everyone told us that they went to be with Jesus. At that time, I was just eight years old. Over the next four years, Govinda and his wife worked hard cutting wood and building fences so they could take care of Deepan Jolly and their other two granddaughters. But their old age was making it more difficult every day. We suffered a lot financially after the attack. We stopped sending our granddaughters to school because we did not have enough money to buy all of the school supplies. We cried out to God almost every day. I bowed down at the feet of Jesus and prayed that he would give my grandparents enough strength to continue their hard work. Then CBN came to their village and offered a free after-school program. When my grandchildren joined the program, they received all their school supplies. They were also able to go back to school after CBN paid their tuition fees. And knowing that Govinda and his wife couldn't handle their strenuous jobs much longer, we built them a store so they could easily support their family. We were so surprised when CBN stocked it full of different items for us to sell. I thank CBN so much for their help. Jesus did all of this for us. He's very important in our lives because he died for us on the cross and rose again. We love Jesus so much because he loved us so much. Until recently, Rudy was an active child. Like many nine-year-olds, soccer was his passion. But his mom worries every time he plays. There was a big lump on his stomach which pushed through his navel. Rudy suffered from an umbilical hernia, where part of his intestine pushes through a weakness in his stomach wall. It really hurt. Rudy's parents took their son to the doctor, but couldn't afford the corrective surgery that was needed. I went home and cried and wondered how we could save enough to get an operation for our son. Both of Rudy's parents make bricks for a living at a company near their home, but their combined income is only $75 a month. A short time later, CBN provided Rudy with free surgery to repair the dangerous hernia. A few weeks after that, he was back playing soccer and in perfect health. I am happy. I can play now. No more pains. I want to say thanks to everyone who had helped me. 